Why on earth would you try to pass your third finger in your right hand over your fourth finger when playing the piano? I'd only really ever thought about crossing my fingers when it was either crossing my thumb under my fingers or passing my fingers over my thumb. However, I've seen lots and lots of examples recently that seem to break this rule. Let's take a look at some. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy's Piano Corner and I'm Tommy. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first visit here, then please do subscribe for regular weekly piano related videos. I've said before that my intention with Tommy's Piano Corner is not to try and set myself up as some kind of online teacher, because clearly I'm not. But I think that if I've got to 50 something years and I've only just recently started to notice certain things about piano playing, then perhaps there are lots of people like myself who haven't quite joined the dots yet in certain things and that it's interesting then to share these discoveries. The idea of crossing fingers other than using your thumb basically is something that I don't remember ever being taught all of those years ago. I remember being taught that the way you basically move up and down the keyboard was by passing your thumb under your fingers or passing your fingers over your thumb when going in the opposite direction. However, over the past year or so, I've started to notice that there are other options that work remarkably well in certain circumstances. One interesting example that I saw was letting your fifth finger of your right hand pass under the fourth finger of your right hand when descending. If you're not sitting at the piano to try this out, you might think that it wouldn't work, but strangely, it's remarkably comfortable to do. I found this useful when I was trying to learn Chopin's Minute Waltz. On the last beat of bar 24, you basically start a D flat major scale descending. And because of where you're playing, your natural instinct might be to play the D flat, the first D flat with your pinky. But of course, then that doesn't really give you a very good solution because you'd end up with your thumb on the G flat, which is not so good. So what you can actually do is play the D flat with your fourth finger then pass your pinky just under to the C natural, which then means that your fourth finger naturally falls onto the next B flat, which puts you back onto the traditional scale fingering. And this does appear possible to do at speed. Another, what at first seemed a really strange fingering choice, was passing the third finger over the fourth finger in the right hand. I've played Chopin's Waltz La Dieu for many, many years now. I, it's something I learned when I first played piano all those years ago. And there's that one fioritura where you've got basically 13 notes in your right hand over two notes in your left that I've always just fluffed my way through. I never bothered to learn it properly. So I thought, oh, no, well, perhaps it's about time that I took it seriously and I had a look at what would be involved to play it. So I started looking for fingerings for this. When I bought my Clavinova all those years ago, Yamaha provide a book with 50 greats for piano or something like that, and this particular waltz is in there. So I had a look at the fingering that was suggested and I was fairly astounded 
to see that it's suggested at the end, when you go from the F natural to the G flat, that you should pass your third finger over your fourth. I spent a little bit of time trying this out and found that it was remarkably comfortable, even though in a sense very counterintuitive. I guess that it works quite well because when you pass your third finger over your fourth, you're able to make that accent slightly better than you would do if you tried playing it with what would be to me the most natural finger, i.e. your fifth finger. As another example for this video, let's look at the slow movement of Beethoven's Pathetic Sonata. I noticed that when I was watching a video by Graham Fitch, that he actually uses a fingering where he has his fourth finger crossing over his fifth finger in his right hand whilst going upwards, which is not something I'd really thought about before. I found that when I was trying to learn the right hand of the repeated notes section in Beethoven's Fur Elise, as Melanie Spanswick said in her book, to try and maintain a legato line without using the pedal, quite often it was necessary to do some rather strange fingerings, but fingerings that work. So for example, five under four or even three under four sometimes. These fingerings might not necessarily work at speed, but this part of the piece isn't intended to be played fast, so they become perfectly workable. If then you've always used the more traditional types of fingering in your playing, I hope this video has given you some ideas of how our hands are actually a little bit more flexible than we might expect. Have a look into these types of odd fingering, for want of a better word, and see how you can use them in the pieces that you're working on. Do let me know in the comments of any novel solutions that you find, I'll be interested to see. If you're not already, then do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click, of course, that little bell icon so that you're notified of all new videos as they're released. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.